Okay, let's check those new features in Excel. Number one, if you head over to the insert tab on the ribbon and you choose pictures, then you can recognize immediately that there is a new feature inserting pictures images into a cell directly from different sources. But it's not the end because this new feature works 100% dynamically with the functions built into Excel. Let me show you. I have a simple Excel table with my favorite Marvel heroes and I'm going to add one more column and I'm going to name it as image. I select the cell, I go to the insert tab hit pictures, place in cell, my image is stored on my device. Then I simply just browse to the folder where I have my images. The first one is the Iron Man in the first row. I hit insert. Here we go. The image got inserted and I just simply repeat the process until I inserted all the images I want. Then I can select the range, go to the home tab and I can align the images with the default functions in Excel. The images will react dynamically to the cell changes if you change any dimension of the cell. But let me show you the coolest thing about this feature. I am going to create a dynamic dropdown. So I go to the data tab, hit data validation, select list and start typing equal indirect. Since I want to create a dynamic list, double quotes, my table name and the column I want to use in my list. That's going to be the hero name column from my table, close double quotes, brackets, hit enter. I created a dynamic dropdown list with a table. So once I add the new value to my table, that's going to be updated on my dropdown list as well. But that's not the trick. Let me show you. I'm going to use a simple XLOOKUP function to pull those images into another cell. So the lookup value is going to be from the dropdown value. Lookup array is my hero name column. Return array. So the result I want to get back is the image. I close the brackets. I hit enter. It shows an error right now because there is no value in my dropdown. But once I select a value from my dropdown, it will show me the image immediately. And I can modify the dimensions of the image by changing the size of the cell. So the best thing about this image function that it will dynamically work with our formulas and arrays we create on a sheet. There is another formula built into Excel, which is called the image. And that can return back images in a cell based on a URL address. Let me show you quickly. I simply head over to Google to look up for some online images. I found this one. I click on the image. It will drive me to an article. I right click on the image. I open in a new tab and I simply just copy the URL of the image. I go back to my Excel file. Let's open up a new sheet. I select the cell equal sign entering image, open brackets, double quotes, paste the URL, double quotes again. So the URL must be between double quotes. I close the brackets and I hit enter and voila, the image formula pulls the image directly to a cell by using a URL address. And why is it awesome? Because you can use your OneDrive to pull images as well. If you want to know how to work with OneDrive URLs with the image function, please check out my next video. Number two, in the new Excel, if you go to the view tab on the ribbon, you will see a new button called navigation and it will open up a true navigation pane, which will help you to navigate between the objects you created in your Excel. The principle is exactly the same what you can see in Power BI, but it's going to be available in the Excel as well. If you look at this navigation pane, then you have a search engine. Every object is being grouped by the sheet names. So if you created anything on a sheet, it will find it and it will name the reference on the sheet as well. And if you click on the reference, then it will drive you directly to the cell reference. It's 100% dynamic. As you see, if I add a new sheet to my workbook, then it will appear on my navigation pane automatically. And once I enter any value in any cell, that's going to be updated on the navigation pane immediately. Number three, I simply go to the formulas tab and you can see that the Python is available in the Excel for data analysis. I can either start typing PY, which will open up the Python code editor. As you see, you have to use the control enter to close the code itself, because if you hit simply the enter, then it will open up just a new line in the code editor. 
here. Or I can just simply select the cell and hit the Python icon and it will open up the code editor. It's very dynamic. You have to just select your table. And as you see, it recognizes automatically that this is a table and has headers, etc. And if I hit Control Enter, then it will create my digital data frame. And the data frame is not more than your table created in a virtual way. There is no any command added to the code line, so nothing happens here. But if I select the cell where I have my Python code, then I go to the formula bar and I select Excel value, then it will extract the data I have in that data frame. So nothing happened to our table because there is no code command added to our Python line. But let's use a common standard one which can create you a quick analysis from your table. First, I select the source cell, then I go back to the formula bar and I return this back to Python object. So you can quickly switch and change between the Excel and the Python object. Then I go back to the code editor and I hit dot describe, open brackets, close brackets, control enter. And here we go. Our data frame has been recalculated. Now I can return back as an Excel value and voila the Python code created me a standard quick analysis about my table. Number four, I simply select this range, then I go to the insert tab, I go to the right hand side and we finally got the checkbox as a feature built into a cell. And it works dynamically with all the formulas you can find in Excel. And if you look at the checkbox itself, when I select the cell, it says true when it's checked. When it's blank, it says false. So the way it works is very simple. It returns back only two values, either true or false. How can we use that? We have many different ways. Let me show you a quick one. I go to the cell. I start entering count if s. I select my range and my criteria is the true. I close the brackets. I hit enter and it's counting how many boxes have been checked in my column. Number five, the next new feature is not 100% complete by Microsoft, I believe, because it doesn't really work well, but let's give it a try. If you go to the data tab on the ribbon, you see that there is a new option to import data from images. I select the picture from file. I browse for the image. I have one image with a handmade drawing with a simple table. I'm going to insert and the cloud service will work on my data. And here we go. As you see, it didn't really work well because the handmade drawing is not that characterized like a digital printed data on a paper. And if I hit insert data, then it will paste me some dummy values. But let's see what happens when I try to insert something digitally printed. So I select picture from file. And as you see, I just simply took a photo about the digital printed paper with my cell phone. And I'm going to insert this one this time. The cloud service is working, but it seems like Microsoft still needs to work on this new feature. Number six, Microsoft finally released the emulated pivot table by a formula. It's called the pivot by function. The first argument we need to enter is the row field. So what you would put under the row section when you use a normal pivot table. So I simply select this time, let's say the hero name column from my table. The next argument is the column fields like in a normal pivot. Now I'm going to select the gender column. The next argument is the values. So basically the column that includes the values I want to work with. The next argument is the actual calculation function. And if you look at this awesome list, you have multiple ways to create calculation within the pivot by function, like in a normal pivot table. I'm going to use the sum and I'm going to set one more argument, which is an option to show the headers. I select number three. Yes, I want to show and maybe one more. You can choose whether you want to show only the grand totals, grand and subtotals together. Let's say I'm choose number one this time. I close the brackets and I hit enter and voila, it created a dynamic array acting like a pivot table. And the last new feature I want to introduce to you is the group by function, which is similar to the pivot by, but it's different. I would say this is the sum if s new version, but it's a dynamic array. Let's see how does it work. The first argument is the row fields. I'm going to use the gender column this time values, let's say strength score, the functions are exactly the same what you can use in the pivot by I'm going to use the sum just for the simplicity. You can set the headers. Yes, show the headers and also play with the grand totals. 
I'm going to choose number one. I close the brackets, I hit enter. It created me a dynamic array by grouping values and using an aggregation. And in this case, it was a sum function. I hope you enjoyed this video and you consider to subscribe to my channel where I can show you everything I know about Excel data, Power BI and the new techniques.